guys good evening all of you today's topic is post colonial literature aaj hum padhne wale hain post colonials and this is again the informal style teaching post colonial writings post colonial writers books theories these things have haunted students students ko normally dar lagta hai aur jab hum gaon mein padhte the to hame to pata hi nahi tha what is post colonial फ्रेंकली उस टाइम तो हमें पता ही नहीं होता था कि वॉट इज पोस्ट कलोनियल वॉट इज कलोनियलिज्म वॉट इज एम्पीरियलिज्म वॉट इज नियो कलोनियलिज्म एंड वॉट इज पोस्ट पोस्ट कलोनियलिज्म तो उस टाइम आइडिया नहीं होता था बट फिलहाल आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर माई नॉलेज विद यू एंड दिस लेक्चर विल बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जाम पर्पज एग्जाम पर्पज के अकॉर्डिंग ही आपको पढ़ाऊंगा आई कीप इट सिंपल आई कीप इट सोब एंड आई ऑल्सो मेक श्योर दैट यू गेट टू नो अ लॉट ऑफ राइटर्स कुछ राइटर्स के नाम बताऊंगा कुछ बुक्स के नाम बताऊंगा जो आपको जरूर पढ़ने हैं सो दैट यू आर फार बेटर एंड यू नो प्रिपेयर्ड इन अ मच बेटर वे सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट एज इट इज़ आवर कस्टम टू ग्रीट एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग सत नमस्ते अस्सलाम वालेकुम ऑल माय स्टूडेंट्स आई हेयर एंड आई ऑल्सो टेल यू दिस थिंग दैट बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माई सेशन इट वॉज संडे so as it was sunday uh, this is the only time i can read and revise certain things for me for my own readings so i was reading post feminism i was reading post feminism some of you are book lovers some of you are book hunters so this was the book that i was using feminism and post feminism this is the new book in my dictionary in my in my collection in my library this is by sara gamble and still special indian edition Rootless companion to feminism and post-feminism. You know, everybody reads feminism. There are fourth wave, fifth wave, sixth wave. But what is beyond feminism? So that was my reading today. And uh, in my coming lectures, I will share this thing with you. This book was recommended by J N U professor. So my senior professor, J N U professor, recommended me this book. And this deals with all types of feminist studies, all types of feminist references. And uh, along with that. This one is histories, histories of postmodernism. So I was reading both of them in connection. Histories of postmodernism. It is by Mark Bevere and Jill Hargis. So this is how I read. Now, <clears throat> yes, Palakshi. There are so many post-colonial videos, and uh, I have posted in uh, some of videos are posted. <laughs> there's a cute comment that sir you did not change your t-shirt yes i didn't change my t-shirt you know because many of you liked it so i thought i should surprise you in the same t-shirt avnish first of all you are a good student you have qualified net but you know if you read pramod kumar nair pk nair like i am also a writer for pearson pk nair sir is also a writer for pearson what is different in you and other students if you are reading the available source and everybody is reading the available source then what is the difference between you and others pk nair sir se to meri baat cheet hoti hai personally to agar aap ek hi aadmi ko pad rahe ho aur sabhi ek aadmi ko pad rahe ho to aap mein difference kya hai post colonials ke liye bahut sari books hoti hain bahut kuch padha ja sakta hai ek second i'll show you some of the books kuch ek baar ruk ke bhai fake and let you know i'll show some of these things so now uh, first of all first of all let's go for the basic understanding of post colonials and here you have to remember this point that first of all we all know that there are so many countries so all these countries all these uh, you know uh, areas they had their own issues every country wants to become rich every country wants to expand their empire every country wants to have more money more no uh, wealth more land more resources this leads imperialism this is how imperialism start and what is imperialism imperialism is that one country with power attacks another country one country with power attacks another country and then this is in hindi called samrajyavad ise kya bolte hain samrajyavad imperialism but now tell me this thing in imperialism you have army you have air force you have navy you have ca- captured another country just like china is trying to capture tibet that is imperialism but what if you do not want to control it by power but you control it by culture by ideology by nativity by ethnicity that is called colonialism colonialism or colonization so sometimes power is involved sometimes power is not involved 
But if you control someone, someone's mind, someone's thoughts, someone's cultural practices, that is colonization. Like in India, when we got colonized, somewhere it was imperialism and somewhere it was colonization. They made us feel that we are inferior, they are superior. They made us feel that our culture is tribal culture, their culture is better culture. They made us feel that we Indians are nobody. We are tribal savages. Do you know William Hazlitt wrote a famous work, Indian Jugglers. We were known as the land of snake charmers. Ernest Hemingway in Falling Equator criticizes India. He talks about India and criticizes it. Do you really think we Indians, you know, I'm a traveler. I have traveled India. I have been to some countries also. I must tell you, India is really great. There is nothing like India. India is everything. India is variety. I was speaking to a professor of Japan. That Japanese professor told me that in Japan, people don't talk to each other. They all have same mindset, same life, same pattern. They all are bored of their life. They feel like committing suicide. You know, in Japan, the professor told me, the Japanese professor, he told me that we rent friends. We have to hire mothers, we hire girlfriends, we hire people to talk. I said, come on, in India, you just go to a tea stall and talk. You sit in a bus, start talking and you will have friends. You know, I must say like one like for India. If you love India, go for a like. I've been to Kerala. We have lush green places. I've been to Kashmir. We have snowy mountains. I've been to uh, Ladakh. I've been to Rajasthan. I've been to Northeast. I've been to the Central India. There is nothing like India and I must tell you. So our diversity is one of the finest thing. India ke naam pe ek ne bhi like nahi kiya hai. Bharat ke naam pe like karoge. Kamal hai. Anyway, but I'm not uh, delivering this speech because I'm a teacher. I should deliver. I'm telling the truth. I've been, you know, I've traveled this nation and I've traveled some countries and I actually felt that I'm really blessed. I really, I'm really blessed to be in India. Yaar, humare dish mein variety hai. Yaar, maza aata hai. Koon kaise bore ho sakta hai? Yaar, every day is the life full of fun. You know, when the Japanese professor was talking about Japan's lifestyle, I actually felt this thing that anybody would commit suicide in Japan. Same lifestyle, same mindset. In India, you are full of surprises, variety of people, variety of colorful people, colorful thoughts, different, different genders, different, different mindset, different, different behaviors. So I must say this, that, that uh, India is India. <clears throat> now, talking about this thing that as Britishers also try to colonize us, the point is, what do we study in post-colonials? Now, the, let's come to the direct question. What do we study in post-colonials? We study this, that once we were, we were colonized, then we had to shift, we had to leave. And when the Britishers left us, when the Britishers left us, what was the mindset? What is the condition of India now? What is the mindset? What is the condition of India now? That is what we study in post-colonials. That's what we study in post-colonials. Uh, I'm getting an important call again and again. So I'll try to drop a WhatsApp for a few seconds. I'm trying to pause this if I can for a few seconds only. There's no disturbance. Sorry. So I was getting repeated calls. Okay. Now, getting back. <clears throat> so after the... Britishers left us, we found that we are not habitual of living together. The formation of India that took place was actually under the British Raj. Earlier, we were divided in hundreds of states, hundreds of empire. Britishers came, they started colonizing us, controlling us. And finally, when they left us, India was in 547 provinces. Point is, the Western culture that is called Occidents and our culture, which is called Orients. Occidents came and controlled the Orients, the relationship between the Occidents and the Orients. This is what we study in post-colonials. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it uh, important? And if it has damaged our culture, to which extent? If it has supported our culture, then again, to which extent? For example, the famous writer Homi Bhabha. Omi Baba talks about hybridity, the idea of hybridity, that the people who are Indians and who also got the uh, cultural practices of the foreign countries, they are the hybrid people. How many of you have read Jhumpa Lahiri? Write down the name, Jhumpa Lahiri. One of the finest post colonial writer. You have to read Jhumpa Lahiri. That's very, very important as a writer. The famous work you have to read is Namesake. 
तो आप सबसे पहले इसको नोट करो रीड इट झुम्पा लाहिड़ी नेम सेक दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंडियन फैमिली इंडियन पेरेंट्स लिविंग अब्रॉड हाउ देयर सन इज ग्रोइंग अप निखिल गोगोल his mindset his behavior his connection with the family that's what you have to read that's what you have to understand and the another book you can also read low land but primarily namesake is very important then her story collection the interpreter of melodies which is very very important jhumpal hadi interpreter of melodies people who live abroad when they return to india what kind of behavior they have how they talk how they uh, show off about their western lifestyle how they hate uh, they are natives but then they hate being native you must have seen nris they don't praise india they praise western countries oh india is this india is that these kind of things then the another thing that you have to read is vs naipaul vs naipaul's most important work house of mr vishwas mr vishwas is an indian but he is not living in india he is in trinidad and tobago technically an indian living in another country which is called dislocation remember baba's location of culture and all so this is dislocation in dislocation also there he is looking for an indian family he gets married in indian family tulsi family hanuman house and how they are living in another country dominated by the british empire so they are not in their own country they are in a different country there also they are dominated by british empire this becomes one of the finest example of post colonials dealing with identity crisis in this book hindi language has been called a secret language so read that this is also very important then the another book that you have to read is wool sewing cars the afro american writer wool sewing car wool sewing cars the lion and the jewel that's very very important lion and the jewel uh, jewel story of sidi baroka lakunle lakunle is a young boy he is a young boy he is uh, educated in western countries when he returns to his african village he starts feeling ashamed of his nativity he thinks the rest of the africans are illiterate and he is the one who has been educated in the foreign country so he is better lakunle an african boy he has uh, taken western education he returns to africa hates his own people and thinks he is superior now what you have to remember here is lakunle thinks that i am the westernized person so i must be you know i am the most suitable bachelor and i must win the hand of sidi the most beautiful girl of the uh, of the village you know there is a scene he wants sidi to kiss him in the western style technically this is called mimicry the concept of baba mimicry we get fascinated bahar wale gore chitte log dekh ke fascinated ho gaye our present day hairstyle aapne ek hairstyle dekha hoga it was a uh, hairstyle from another country mohawk style boys jante honge aapne dekha hoga na some boys having long hair then beard beard trimmed and then long beard virat kohli copied it then everybody copied it why are we copying the western lifestyle western hairstyle western fashion western method western way of living life why that's what baba says mimicry artificiality another book that you have to read is mohsin hamid reluctant fundamentalist another book that you have to read is by mohsin hamid reluctant fundamentalist अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पाकिस्तानी कैरेक्टर चंगेज खान चंगेज खान किस तरह से अमेरिका में है अमेरिका से वापस आता है वट हैपन्स टू हेम द फर्स्ट पैराग्राफ ऑफ द रिलेक्टेंट फंडामेंटल इज अमेजिंग देन मेक श्योर यू रीड अन द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट बुक दैट इज हनीफ कुरैशी हनीफ कुरैशी इज फेमस वर्क माई सन द फैनेटिक वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्टोरी ऑफ अ पाकिस्तानी मुस्लिम लिविंग इन अमेरिका how they have uh, forgotten their native culture and they have adapted another culture the loss of first culture and the acceptance of second culture the sense of guilt sense of belongingness that all vanished you know few days back i was in dubai two days i felt good two days good buildings cars and everything third day i started missing indianness I was like, yeah, nobody is talking to nobody. No, no, there are no ch- uh, tea shops, no corners. People are not interacting. Where is my India? That is called sense of belongingness. This is also called identity crisis. Then you have to read Kiran Desai, Inheritance of Loss. In my last live class, I have talked about this, so I won't narrate it. Then Arundhati Roy, God of Small Things, very important post-colonial work. You have to read it. Then how the colonization or shifting culture. plays with language 
Gugivo Thiongo said this thing to kill the culture, kill the language first. Namwar Singh, then Indian professor, he has written the decolonizing the Indian mind. So you have to read Namwar Singh, decolonizing the Indian mind, and Gugivo Thiongo's decolonizing the mind. Along with that, you have to read Anita Desai's In Custody, the language politics in post colonials. Anita Desai's In Custody, very, very important. Then Amitav Ghosh in an antique land. These are the questions on that exam. Make sure you read these things. And then comes Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie has written many books dealing with colonization, post colonials, post modernization. So make sure that you do not forget Midnight Children, then Shame, then Harun and other stories. These are the most important work. Make sure you read these works. As I'm telling you, important works of post colonials. Read Azaz Ahmed, his idea of ethnic nepotism. Read Leela Gandhi. She is very important. Most of the people don't know her. Please read these writers. And also, don't forget, Gayatri Chakravarti Spivaks, Can the Subaltern Speak? It's very important. Subalterns are the people who have never been voiced. Subalterns are the people who have never got chance to speak. For example, uh, we are talking about Sati Prathya, right? So, uh, Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak has talked about Sati tradition. In Sati tradition, tell me this thing that all the Satis who went through the Sati tradition, getting immolated with the body of husband, self-immolation in a divine way, in a ritual way, did do we have any Sati who got burnt and survived? No, they all died because they were supposed to die. So all these Satis, they are dead. The how do we know about the stories of Satis, their pain, their sufferings or their motivation to get immolated with the body of husband? We don't know that. Then who talks about them? Others, the others who did not try to be Sati. The others are writing about them. This is called voicing the unvoiced. So they are voicing them, right? Voices unheard. So this is called subalterns. They could not speak. For example, this is my important line. I think uh, yesterday's class also I told you this line. Until the lion learns to write, history will always glorify the hunter. What does that mean? Until the lion learns to write, history will always glorify the hunter. So because if hunter is the only writer, we will have to rely upon a hunter. Tiger is dead. So we don't know the tiger side of story. Same as with Sati tradition. Satis are dead. We do not know their story. It is the others who are writing about them. That's what Gayatri Chakravarti calls subalterns. For example, if you're talking about Dalit writings, so Dalit writings should be written by the Dalit writers only. But there are so many other writers, they are also trying to justify them. In the case of women, most of the female characters are written by male writers. How a male writer can actually justify a female character? So this kind of point uh, that you have to remember. Then, along with these writers, you have to go for Chinua HB. Things fall apart and no longer at ease. Both stories are very important. Igbo community, Yoruba tribes, then Oknoko, Obi Oknoko. These characters are very, very important. You have to read both of those stories. Then in many other African writers, the present day African writer who is really famous is Chimananda Ngozi Adichie. Chimananda Ngozi Adichie is a very important writer. And you have to read Half a Yellow Sun. And... There is a famous uh, speech by her where she says, yes, as a woman, I'm angry. In the famous speech where she says, yes, we should all be feminist. She says, yes, as a woman, I'm angry. So read these points because in post-colonials, you will have many questions like this. They can come with any kind of question. So when you read, make sure you understand post-colonial theories. Read what is ethnic nepotism. You go to England. An Indian, a Pakistani, a Bangladeshi, they become friend in England. Because in England, they are they, they are them, and you are different, right? So technically, the us-other mentality by Edward Said, the idea of Orientalism, Occidentalism, and the idea of ethnic nepotism. Then, ambivalence. What is ambivalence? Ambivalence is where you are not able to understand whether the colonization was good or bad. For example, if you talk to some people, they will say that Britishers did great thing in India. Britishers gave us schools, Britishers gave us colleges, they gave us railway transportation, post offices and government exam. The government examination system was launched by Britishers where you can just crack the exam and become one of the top leading authorities. Earlier, it was only kings, upper caste. 
So somewhere you will feel that yes, it's good. Then somewhere you will feel though no no it was bad. The Britishers tortured us, forced us to do indigo plantation, killed our culture, killed our language, killed our native identity. So the idea where they were good or bad that is called ambivalence. So make sure you remember that point. This is very important. Then Anglophilia, fascination with English language. If you go to a small town, you talk to people in English and you will see that yes there is a difference. आपने कभी देखा है कभी झगड़ा हो ना किसी से कोई पॉइंट हो आपको कंप्लेन करनी अंग्रेजी में बोलो पीपल विल लिसन टू यूर सीरियसली स्टार्ट शाउटिंग इन इंग्लिश बहुत जल्दी है बाबू साहब बाबू साहब वाला फील आता है वैसे अर्लियर आई यूज टू अवॉइड दिस थिंग बट नाउ दिस इज इंग्लिश इज माई टॉपिक एवरी डे डायरेक्टली इन डायरेक्टली आई एम स्पीकिंग इंग्लिश सो समवेयर वेन आई ऑल्सो गेट एंग्री आई स्टार्ट शाउटिंग इन इंग्लिश बट आई मस्ट टेल यू पीपल डू लिसन टू यू इफ यू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश तो इस तरह की जो चीजें आती है ना दिस इज कॉल्ड एंग्लोफिलिया फैसिनेशन विद इंग्लिश सिक्स मोर लाइक्स रिक्वायर्ड 134 स्टूडेंट्स वाचिंग दिस लेक्चर सिक्स लाइक्स रिक्वायर्ड चौरानवे लाइक्स हैं हंड्रेड कर दो कम ऑन गाइस और अगर हंड्रेड नहीं कर रहे हो तो इस बात पे कर दो मै कॉलेज सेड वी आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट द रेस ऑफ ब्राउन पीपल ब्राउन बाय ब्लड यूरोपियन बाय माइंड नाइनटी से एक बच्चे ने लाइक कम कर दिया कोई बात नहीं ये तो और खराब हो गया नुकसान हो गया But make sure remember this: the contribution of Lord Macaulay. That's very, very important. And along with these things, you have to understand this: that in post-colonial India, there are certain writers they are talking about it. So Mina Alexander, most important writer. Then Manju Kapoor Dalmia, very important writer. Bharti Mukherjee, most important writer. Sujata Bhatt, Vandana Shiva, they all are most important writers. If you never knew about them, please read. O. P. Vijayan, you have to read. Perumal Murugan, you have to read. These writers have been asked in net exam. C. S. Lakshmi, also called Ambai, they are the writers dealing with the colonization and post-colonialism in their native languages. So they are very important. Just finish these things now. I'll share some of the books where I read. This is Southern Post Colonials, Southern Post Colonials, Sumanyu Satpati, Professor in Delhi University, Southern Post Colonials. This is one of my source of reading. Then another source of reading is. post colonial approaches to literature text context and theory then this one my favorite the indian post colonials and this one there was a question in it exam just one question imagine community by benedict anderson just one question i purchased the whole book sirf ek question ke liye maine puri kitab khareedi thi because the book is imagine communities reflections on the origin and spread of nationalism what is national allegory this was the question connected to benedict anderson so i'll be providing you lectures on these things i'll be sharing these points with you today whatever the writers have given please read those writers some of the viewers have joined us from pakistan love from india thank you so much for joining i cannot officially take your admissions i get a lot of texts from afghanistan also and southern south asian uh, countries but i cannot take admissions in official batches so i would request you to watch the live classes only i have to take care of uh, our country regards to our security agencies that's the reason we do not take admissions of international students love from india now guys yes you have read imagine coming in your post graduation i have got the complete book जब ये सारी चीजें पढ़ोगे तो एक चीज बहुत अच्छे से याद रखना दैट इन पोस्ट कॉलोनियल राइटर्स फीमेल पोस्ट कॉलोनियल राइटर्स आर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सो जितने भी अरुंधति रॉय किरण देसाई अमिता देसाई मीना अलेक्जेंडर मंजू कपूर डालमिया भारती मुखर्जी ये सबका सेपरेट रीडिंग करके जाना दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इनकी सेपरेट रीडिंग्स को मत भूलना दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट समटाइम्स दे कैन ऑल्सो आस्क यू हु इज द बेस्ट पोस्ट कॉलोनियल लीडिंग ऑथर सो पोस्ट कॉलोनियल लीडिंग ऑथर इन इंडिया इज अमिताभ घोष If we talk about overall writers, then Salman Rushdie and V.S. Nayapal are there. Recently, Salman Rushdie got attacked, so he is in news. So there are chances that uh, maybe they can ask a question, but they will not ask any question related to satanic verses. So just read Midnight Children; that will be uh, more than enough. V.S. Nayapal, House of Mr. Vishwas, Chinua H.B. Things fall apart, no longer at ease. Wolf Soinka, The Lion and the Jewel, and Telephonic Conversation. Then Half a Yellow Sun by Nadin, uh, by uh, Chivananda Adichie. Then My Son's Story by Nadin Gaudimer. These are the most important works. 
read the summaries write down the characters and the stories and you will be prepared for most of the questions coming from post colonial literature in my coming lecture i will be dealing with post colonial theories there are 35 plus terms related to post colonials we are going to deal with those terms what is ethnic nepotism what is exotic otherness what is mapping what is native nation narration concept we are going to deal with these concept till then stay tuned complete these works jo maine aaj padhaya hai inko complete karo <laughs> palakshi has written this thing that i went to starbucks and spoke to them in hindi that's good this is called abrogation abrogation is also a post colonial term coined by gugibo thiongo abrogation when you resist the alien culture for example you go to the club night club in dhoti in indian dress in sari that is called abrogation because in the night clubs are based on western ideas western concepts so you going to night club for music and going in indian dress this is something that you love your nativity your ethnicity and before i sum up i must tell you this point also that uh, you must have seen the news recently that whether it is india or it is bharat see india name is not given by britishers like most of the people they are writing it on whatsapp that india is a name given by the britishers no india is not a name given by britishers india got popularized because the westerns were calling us with this name but remember in 1492 when columbus discovered america columbus was calling them red indians so they were actually looking for india indus indus civilization indus is a word used for sindhu nadi sindhu word got converted into hindu so indus india sindhu hindu so it's not connected to british uh, imperialism or british colonization and uh, that's what you have to understand because you know the and the name bharat the name bharat comes from uh, the timing of mahabharat because the first king bharat dushyant bharat and other kings right so uh, you must be knowing there is a line in mahabharat यदा यदा हि धर्म से ग्लानिर्भवती न भारत अभ्युत्थान यदा यदा हि धर्म से ग्लानिर्भवती न भारत अभ्युत्थान अभ्युत्थान न धर्म से अभ्युत्थान न धर्म से तदात्म सृजान अभ्युत्थान न धर्म से परत्रणा साधुना विनाशा च दुष्कृता संभवा युगे युगे धर्म संस्थापनाय संभवा युगे युगे सो देर इज अ लाइन भारत कम्स देर राइट so yes those who understood you must have got it i try to remember the lines in sanskrit i must have made some mistake but uh, at least at least i try to remember jisko acche se aata hai comment me likh dena and those who are watching it don't forget to like the video tab tak bye bye good night have a happy sunday